Welcome to our slash ask reddit. Today's topic is. What's the weirdest sex act you've ever done alone? First comment. I had heard about wanker rings, the rubber ones and the plastic slash metal ones and heard they make you harder for longer so decided to try and improvise one day when my mum and sister went out. I found a metal ring that went on a curtain pole and had a little plastic clip on so I removed that and got some cooking oil and went into my room, greased up the ring and slid it over my semi-flaccid penis and balls. It felt pretty good, so I grabbed a magazine and started to rub one out. The ring slowly moved further back, restricting blood flow and wedging itself tight against my balls and base of my wanker. This thing was tight, and I suppose it was doing its job until after I came and wanted it to slide off. It wouldn't. It was there, right against my purple wanker and balls for 30 minutes before mum came home. I couldn't budge it. I was in pain, so I had to call her. The look of utter horror, disbelief, disgust in her eyes will stay with me forever. By this time my wanker was the color number 301934 and I was in severe pain. My mum immediately called my dad. He drove from work, about 10 minutes, came upstairs, took one look at me, got some Vaseline from the bathroom, which I wish I had known about earlier, he got a thin piece of plastic and put Vaseline on it and slid it under the ring and kind of levered it a bit. The blood drained and my member subsided. He handed me a towel, ruffled my hair, picked up the ring, shut my bedroom door and went back to work. We never talked about it again. Next comment. Using a home TNS machine to zap myself to finishing. Next comment. Every year I help my dad with Christmas lights. I climb up on the roof and carefully clipped all the lights onto the peaks. I grew up in a conservative house and only recently discovered how nice masturbating can be. Did you know that orgasms can help relieve period cramps? Who knew? Well I have a particular fondness for the cowgirl position with my BF, but it absolutely destroys my knees. Sitting on my knees on a flat, even if it's soft, surface is difficult for me. So here I am, sitting on the warm roof, hanging lights on my house when my dad walks inside to get something. I'm straddling a roof peak, all alone, the neighborhood is quiet, and I can see there's no one outside. I'm at an angle where I can't be seen from the ground anyway. My knees are at the perfect angle to not hurt in this position and suddenly thoughts of the BF enter my head. I just start rocking back and forth on the peak of my roof. When my dad came back out, I was in a much better mood. Next comment. Started fingering my rear end in like high school, but that wasn't enough. Went to sharpie markers, but not enough. Had the idea to use a banana, but the bottom end had that hard, kind of sharp end on it. So, what did I do? I used sandpaper to file it down to be smooth and an easy glide in. Bananas don't last too long going up the rear end. Next comment. I was quite horny in my early teens, so I looked up innovative ways to masturbate. As it seems, if you hollow out a cucumber and microwave it, it does not feel like the inside of a vagina. I was left with the most disgusting vegetable you've ever seen and a memory that lives under the surface of my dignity. Next comment. Not the act itself, I guess, but the event as a whole. We lived in the sticks and internet shopping wasn't really a thing back then, not that we had internet anyway. I was a horny but resourceful teenage girl, so I whittled myself a penis-like dildo out of a piece of firewood, sanded it, and varnished it. I was around 14 to 15 at the time. I tested it out once without a condom, and freaked out about the potential toxicity of the varnish. Then used a disposable latex glove because there were no condoms in the house, and the thought of buying them was mortifying. In the end I was too paranoid about it being found, so I tossed it into the fire the next time the fireplace was lit. Next comment. Not me, but a dude that was a few years older than me in high school. This dude, Ted, decided that it was a good idea to f a head and shoulders shampoo bottle while he was in the shower. 
his wanker ended up getting stuck in the bottle and he had to go to the ER to get it removed. Afterward he was forever known as Ted and Shoulders. Next comment. When I was in middle school, I ended up in in-school suspension where I was essentially locked in a supply closet with a desk in it for a week and a half. The supply closet was connected to the principal's office, but no one really came in to check on me besides at lunch time when it was mandatory to bring their closet prisoners food. Anyways, that closet turned into my masturbator EM. Very important masturbatory studies and experiments were conducted in my time there. Very scientific and groundbreaking work was headed by myself and my assistant right hand woman. Great assistant and still with me to this day. Years later when I was in high school, I returned to speak with the new principal of that middle school about supplies for a club project I was working on. I went into the closet where the desk was to gather a few boxes she prepared for me. Lo and behold I noticed, for the very first time, a camera trained right on the effing desk. To this day I have no idea if that camera was there while I was in there. It's the exact same as the rest of the cameras in that school so I feel like it has been. Next comment. My grandmother, bless her soul, was the sweetest most innocent woman you'd ever met. She would stay with us sometimes and help around the house. One year, for Christmas, she bought me a pack of hankies. Obviously confused I wanted an explanation. She said to me that I need to use hankies to blow my nose into, instead of all my clothes because she did the washing and saw all the crusty stains on them. I am sorry grandma. I am really, really sorry. Next comment. I kind of have this fetish where the idea of being experimented on, or being the product of a Frankenstein's monster kind of experiment, is a big turn on. I also have a fetish for being forced to drink liquids. So, one day I decided to try combining the two. I set up some spooky green lights in my living room, then take some plastic tubing I have from other hobbies and make myself a siphon, with one end down my throat a little ways, and the other in a big butt cup of Gatorade sitting on a table above me, may as well hydrate, am I right? I laid down on my back, with a towel under me, and just kind of let the siphon go. It didn't last long. The weight changed so rapidly that you being pulled a glass over, spilling the like half gallon of Gatorade all over me and my carpet. I had put towels down, but it was just so much it still soaked through. So here I am, sitting in the middle of my living room, naked, covered in Gatorade like a butthole. It wasn't a highlight of my solo sexual exploits, but it's a good story I don't ever get to tell. LOL. Next comment. Got so horny that I masturbated with a carrot and went to see my then BF with the carrot still inside me, 20 minutes bus ride, just to be greeted by his mom at the door. Nope, got the F out of there even before entering his place. Next comment. Made a fake vagina with a rubber glove, empty pasta sauce jar, a bath sponge and a rubber band. Then F edited for weeks as a lonely teenager. Next comment. One time I heated up a 5 layer bean burrito from Taco Bell for about 150 seconds before trying to use it as a flashlight. I went balls deep and caused first degree burn on my crotch. Yes, I was a teen when I did this. Yes, I worked at Taco Bell. No, I would not recommend. No, that's not how we made sour cream. Next comment. Ok so a buddy and I that lived together went out drinking one night. Got sloshed and had a great time. We both woke up early the next morning and headed back to the apartment. Now he's a decent cook so he said he'd whip us up some omelettes as hangover food. I was stoked as I felt like crap. So, he gives me my plate and we both go to our respective rooms. I get about 3 to 5 bites in and I'm just way too hungover to be eating anything of real substance without risk of throwing it up. Now a weird thing about myself. I'm sure it happens to others, but I get super horny when hungover. I don't understand why, but it happens. Normally I'll beat off and immediately hate myself as the headache from the hangover comes back full force. 
But this time, instead of beating off like a normal person, I looked at that omelette and thought I bet that would feel amazing. So, I am throwing caution to the wind I fed that omelette. Just really give it the business until I finished. Regret and disdain for myself came rushing back to me along with my headache as I threw the omelette away in the trash and crawled into bed to sleep the rest of my hangover away. The end. Thanks for watching.